you begin to worship the Lord, begin to worship Him, begin to worship Him, begin to worship Him. Father, we worship You, we invite Your presence. Holy Spirit, we welcome You. Do a new thing in our lives. Do a new thing in our lives. We give You praise. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for your presence. We ask that you do a new thing in our lives. Let your hand of God be upon us. Change every life. Transform destinies. Let your anointing be present to destroy every yoke and to remove every burden. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, you're welcome to day one, our June prophetic encounter. And our theme for this month is Curse the Curse. Hallelujah. Our theme is Curse the Curse. And I want to believe that God is really going to do some great and mighty things in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, are you ready for the word? I want you to... Uh, call someone, text someone, invite them to join us as together we experience the goodness of the Lord. Don't be left behind because God is about to do something awesome, something amazing in your life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, uh, just before I go into the word, I want to encourage you to register for the Young Pastors Conference, which is coming up on the 27th of June, the last Saturday of this month. I want you to register. Uh, the details will be shown on the screen for you to, to register. And as you register, God is going to bless you. If you know of any pastor, that needs encouragement, that needs to know how to go about the work of the ministry, uh, please do so. Forward the details to them and they will be greatly blessed. Amen. And not only that, also prepare for Covenant 2020, uh, which begins from the 4th of August to the 7th of August. Amen. Uh, so I want you to prepare your heart uh, because without any shadow of doubt, God's name will be glorified. And so let's prepare our hearts also for Covenant 2020 because your lives will never be the same again. We are trusting God that Pastor Tao will be a blessing to us. Uh, we still believe that Covenant is going to come on powerfully no matter what is going on around the world. We believe that by August, uh, things will be settled down and God will do us good in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, uh, turn with me, please, in your Bibles to the book of um, Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 3. Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 3. I read, the Bible says that now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country from your family, from your father's house 
to a land that I will show you and I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. Verse 3 is our key verse. Verse 3 says, God says, And I'll bless those who bless you, and I'll curse those who curse you. And in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. God says, I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. And in you shall all, not some, but in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Amen. 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 And we are blessed by the reading of God's word. I'm starting a new series that I have titled, Curse the Curse. Curse the Curse. And this is part one. Curse the Curse. And this is part one. Please understand that we are living in a very wicked and crooked world. Whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not, there is wickedness in our world. There are people who are doing wicked. Whether you know, like it or not, there are some people who may not like your face. This is how Paul puts it. Paul said, not all men have faith. Not all men have faith. Are you following me? So we have to understand that the world and this system that we're living in has so many evil going on. And so therefore, we have to be ready and understand the times that we're living in so that we can wage a good warfare in accordance to God's word. The scripture we read in Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 3, God was calling Abraham out of his father's house. God was calling Abraham out of his father's house. Now remember, Abraham's father was an idol worshipper. Yeah, Abraham's father was an idol worshipper. So Abraham, for all his life, has known nothing but idol worshipping. And so because of that, God wanted to do a new thing with Abraham. So in Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1, the Bible says, And now the Lord has said to Abraham, Get out of your country. For God to do something new with you, you have to be willing to take risk. God said to Abraham, get out of your country. His country was an environment that he was familiar with. Not only that, the next thing God said to Abraham is get out of your family. So number one, get out of your country. Number two, get out of your family. And number three, get out of your father's house. His father's house represents provision. His father's house represents provision. His family represents relatives or relation. And God said, get out of these three places to a land that I will show you. Now, I want you to notice that God has not shown him the land yet. But God said, if you can trust me and come out of your country, come out of your family, come out of your father's house to a land that I will show you, then verse 2, God says, I will make you, Abraham, a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. Glory be to God. And you shall be what? A blessing. Verse 3 is our foundational text. And God said, I will bless those who bless you. And I will 
curse him who curses you. So that's where the theme of our uh, prophetic encounter is coming from. Curse the curse. God says, I, Jehovah, I will curse anyone who curses you. So that therefore implies that the way to deal with curse is to curse the curse. God says, I, Jehovah, I will curse him who curses you. And in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Question we want to ask, why curse the curse? Why curse the curse? Luke chapter 11 verse 21 and 22, the Bible says, this is Jesus speaking. Jesus said, when a strong man fully armed guards his own palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he comes upon him, he overcomes him and he takes from him all his armor in which he trusted and he divides his paw. So see how we curse the curse. Now, verse 21, Jesus said, when a strong man, the strong man there represents the devil. The strong man there represents Satan. Jesus said, when a strong man fully armed guards his own palace, then his goods are in peace or his goods are secured. Now, if his goods are secured and you want to go after the goods he has stolen from you. Now, remember, this, the devil has nothing of his own. Everything he has, he stole it. Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So everything the devil has, he stole it. He doesn't have anything that belongs to him. So in Luke eleven twenty two, Jesus said, but when a stronger than he comes, but when a stronger than he, a stronger than who? He, the devil, a stronger than he comes, when he comes, he comes upon him and overcomes him. How are you going to overcome the devil? You have to be stronger than him. Are you following me? You have to be what? Stronger than him. But when a stronger than he comes upon him and overcomes him, he takes from him all his armor. Look at the things you go for first. You disarm him. You disarm the devil in which he puts his trust. And then you divide his spoils. You don't go after the spoils first. Yes, the main purpose for going to attack the devil and to take back what belongs to you is to go for the spoil. But your number one agenda must be to go for his armor. When you go for the armor, then he becomes defenseless. He becomes armorless. Then you can have access to whatever he stole from you. Mark chapter 3 verse 27, Jesus said, No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then he'll plunder his house unless he first binds the strong man. How do we bind the strong man? Through prayer. Jesus said this kind, this kind, Matthew chapter 17 verse 21, Jesus said this kind coming not out, not out except by prayer and fasting this kind are you following me so you bind the strong man through prayer and fasting that's why we engage three days of prayer and fasting during the prophetic encounter are you following me so this kind doesn't come out except through prayer and fasting don't be like Esau don't sell your birthright through eating Listen, your destiny is at stake. And what we are dealing with here within the next three days is going to transform your life. So if you didn't fast today, tomorrow and Friday is another day for you to fast. Amen. So we are looking at the subject, curse the curse, and this is part one. 
Quick question we want to ask is what is a curse? What is a curse? A curse is an is an is negative words released to empower you to fail. A curse is a negative word released to empower you to fail. That's my simple definition of what a curse is. A curse is a negative word released to empower you to fail. Number two, a curse is a solemn utterance intended to invoke a supernatural power to inflict harm or punishment on someone or on something. Hallelujah. A curse is a solemn utterance intended to invoke a supernatural power to inflict harm or punishment on someone or on something. So quick question we want to look at is, we, we want to go and look at the origin of curses. Where did first, where did, where did curses first originated from? Genesis chapter 3 from verse 13. Genesis chapter 3 from verse 13. There's so much to cover, so I want you to run with me. Amen. Genesis chapter 3 from verse 13. I read, the Bible says, And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? Now you know the background of the story. Uh, the serpent had deceived Adam and Eve, and they had uh, 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 gone against God's word. They have gone to eat the fruit of the tree that God said they shouldn't eat. So when God came, and this is the first time we see the mention of the word curse in the Bible. So in Genesis 3 from verse 13, the Bible says, And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. Verse 14, the Bible says, So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed. First time the word cursed is released. And this word was released by God. The first time the word cursed was introduced was not man. Man was not cursed. Now we are going to demystify all of these things and for you to have a clear understanding of how curses work. But please understand that God never cursed man. So the Bible says, God said, you, the serpent, are cursed more than all cattle. Now, I want you to notice the words God used here. God said, you are cursed more than all cattle. So that means there was an element of curse around that time then, but no one knew about it. Now, if God had said you are blessed more than all the cattle, that means the other cattle were operating in some form of blessing. So God said you are cursed. Even though curse was not known then, God now is saying or invoking a curse upon the serpent and saying you are cursed. Now notice the curse is upon the serpent. We have to differentiate the differences. Man was not cursed. God never cursed man. Are you following me? So in Genesis 3.13, the Bible says, The Lord God said, No, sorry. Um, in verse 14, Eve said that it is the serpent that has caused me to do this thing. So when he said that, when she said that, God immediately put a curse on the serpent. God said, you are cursed more than all the cattle. Hallelujah. So he said, you are cursed more than all the cattle. 
and more than every beast of the field and on your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust notice these are the cases and you shall eat dust amen you shall eat dust all the days of your life and I will put enmity between you and the woman between you and the seed of the woman and God says he will bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel are you following me so far verse 16 to the woman God said I will multiply greatly your sorrow and your conception in pain you shall bring forth children your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you so notice God put a curse on the serpent but God never put a curse on Eve God put a curse on the fruit of Eve what Eve will give birth to the process a curse was put, put upon the process follow me very carefully verse 17 God said to Adam to Adam he said because you have heeded to the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you saying you shall not eat of cursed is the ground for your sake mm. did you see that yeah. so God did not directly curse Adam this is very important God did not directly curse Adam God put a curse on Adam's work he said curse shall be the ground for your sake and in toil you shall eat of it glory be to God verse 18 it says both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you and you shall eat the herb of the field in the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground for out of it you were taken for dust you are and dust you shall return hallelujah Amen. for dust you are and for dust you shall return so look at the first mention of the word curse man was not cursed the woman was not cursed but the serpent was cursed satan was cursed god put a curse on the produce on the outcome of man man was never cursed this is very important now because of the sins of adam and eve the entire human race was born into sin because adam and eve were the first human beings and because they were the first human beings every fruit every human being that comes out of that first human being that is cursed produces curse so in psalm 51 verse 5 psalm 51 verse 5 it says behold i was brought forth in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me hallelujah Amen. is it psalm 51 verse 1 behold i was brought forth in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me verse 5 so you see man was conceived in sin man was born in sin glory be to God Amen. so now let's go and look at how to identify the presence of curses in one's life let's go and look at how to identify curses in your life number one examine yourself extens extensively Number one, examine yourself extensively. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. 
2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. It says, Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified. So he said, Examine yourselves. How are you going to know whether there is a curse operating in your life? Examine your life. Examine your life extensively. Do an extensive examination. Do an extensive self-examination to find out what is actually happening in your life. But also, most unfortunately, sometimes we are not honest with self-examination. Number two, Take note of cyclical or recurrent issues in your life. Number two, take note of cyclical or recurrent issues in your life. Nahum chapter 1 verse 9. Nahum chapter 1 verse 9. It says, affliction shall not rise up again the second time. Affliction shall not rise up again the second time. Nahum chapter 1 verse 9. So take note of cyclical or recurrent issues in your life. If you constantly go through recurrent and cyclical issues, then that means there is a presence of a curse, some sort of curse operating in your life. Are you following me? then that means there is an element of curse operating. And so therefore, you have to now understand what is happening and deal with it. Number three, track and trace every major pattern of failures in your family background. Number three, track and trace every family, every major pattern of failures in your family background. Genesis chapter 20 verse 2. Genesis chapter 20 verse 2. We're going to look at two, two very interesting uh, people, Abraham and Isaac, and look at the same pattern that operated in their life. The Bible says, Now Abraham said of Sarah his wife, She is my sister, quote and unquote. And Abimelech, king of Gerah, sent and took Sarah. You know the story? When there was farming, Abraham went down to Gerah. And when they were going, Abraham told Sarah, Sarah, you know you're very beautiful. So uh, uh, because you are beautiful, let the people know that you are my sister. For if you say you are my wife, they are going to kill me. So because Abraham said to Sarah, say you are my sister. And everybody in that place heard that Abraham's a wife was his sister, Abimelech the king sent for Abraham's wife. And he wanted to marry her, but what happened next was that God appeared to Abimelech in a dream. When God appeared to Abimelech, the Bible says that God said to Abimelech, if you don't give the man, the man's wife back to him, you are dead. You'll be a dead man. For Abraham is a prophet. That's the first time we hear the word prophet mentioned by God. God said Abraham is a prophet. And you know the story Abimelech handed back uh, Sarah and then also uh, Abimelech gave Abraham a lot of wealth and so on and so forth. Amen. Now go to Genesis chapter 26 verse 7. To nine, Genesis chapter 26 from verse 7 to 9. Now in this instance there is famine again and this time Isaac, Abraham's son is also going down for food. Now the Bible says that and the men of that place asked about his wife and he said she is my sister. Same thing the father said. He's saying the same thing. Do you see the pattern? 
That's why you have to track and trace every major pattern of failures in your family background. Listen, as a matter of fact, when Abraham lied about about um, uh, Sarah, you know, how old was how old was um, Isaac? So Isaac didn't know about his father's lie but he came and followed the same pattern because in the family there is a pattern of lies which was a curse are you following me so in genesis 26 7 he said she is my sister for he feared to say that she is my wife lest the men of that place will kill him for rebecca for for rebecca for rebecca's sake because she was fair to look upon that's it <laughs> same thing as his father now it came to pass when he had been there for a long time that abimelech king of the philistine looked through a window and saw and there was isaac showing endearment to rebecca his wife see same thing and he's the same king same abimelech same king. This king also has a pattern. He likes going after other people's wife. Same family. Same family. He like the wives in Abraham's family. He went after his father's wife. Now he's coming after his wife. Verse 9, the Bible says that, And Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold, of a surety, she is your wife. And how did you say that she is my sister? And Isaac said unto him, Because I said that, lest I should die of, on account of her. Did you see that? Did you see the pattern? These are not coincidences. These are patterns that operate in families. Write this down. Cases are real. And there are people employed just to curse. Mm. Cases are so real that there are some people who are employed just to do what? Just to curse. So don't joke with these things. Curses are so real. So don't play with them. Amen. Amen. Numbers chapter 22 from verse 6. We'll jump a few verses. Look at Numbers chapter 22 verse 6. Now, you know the background of this scripture. The background of this scripture is when the children of Israel were coming out of, out of Egypt and um, Balak saw them and Balak became scared because he said there is a people who are coming from behind the sea who are a mighty nation and everything that they see on their way they leak it they conquer it and so because of that Balak went and employed Balaam to come and curse God's people so in Numbers 22 verse 6 the Bible says now therefore please come at once curse these people for me for they are too mighty for me Perhaps I should be able to defeat them and drive them out of the land. For I know that he whom you bless is blessed, and he whom you curse is cursed. Mm. My God, look at how powerful Balaam was. Balaam was such a powerful prophet. And everyone he blesses is blessed. Mm. Everyone he curses is cursed. Mm. So at this point... Balak is employing Balaam to go and curse God's people. You might not know, but there are some people who have employed people just to curse you. Because they cannot get to you, sometimes they employ others to curse you. And sometimes they go through all kinds of manipulations. Verse 11, the Bible says, Look, a people has come out of Egypt. They cover the face of the earth. Come now, curse them for me. Perhaps I shall be able to overpower them and drive them out. Come now, 
and cursed them for me. Why was that? Why did Balak wanted God's people cursed? Verse 12, the Bible says, And God said to Balaam, You shall not go with them. You will not curse the people, for they are blessed. Glory be to God. Now this is why I told you from the beginning that God never cursed man. Well, I'll show you shortly that man was never cursed. And we're going to even look at, you know, people have this this theory, you know, that the black race is cursed. The black race is not cursed. Now, when Noah cursed Canaan, we are going to see that in Genesis chapter 9 verse 1, God blessed Noah and his sons. Are you following me? When God blessed Noah, he blessed Noah and his sons. So that means when God blesses you, no devil can curse you. But sometimes the devil can put a curse on the produce, on the effort, on your effort. Because the devil is the number one copycat. He knew that in Genesis, God did not curse Adam and Eve. If God has had cursed Adam and Eve, then that means the entire human race would have been cursed. But the effort of man was cursed. So Numbers chapter 22 verse 17, look at Balak bribing Balaam. He said, for I will certainly honor you greatly and I will do whatever you say to me. Therefore, please come, curse these people for me. So don't think that curses are not operating in this world. They are operating. There are people who are employing others just to curse. Now, let's go and look at three factors that activate curses in the lives of people. Three factors that activate curses in the lives of people. Number one is stealing. Number one is stealing. Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8 to 9. Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8 to 9. God says, will a man rob God? With a big question mark. Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? Then God says, in tithes and in offerings. God says, you have robbed me in tithes and in offerings. Verse 9, God says, because you have robbed me in tithes and in offerings, God says, you are cursed with a curse. Did you see? Cursed with a curse. Curse the curse. You are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. My God, this is very powerful. This is the first time we see a double curse. You are cursed with a curse. Now, uh, actually it appears in in uh, in Numbers also, but we won't go there. Where, where uh, the covenants that God made with Abraham was repeated. Anyone who curses you, I will curse. So when somebody curses you, you now go into a higher form of power and curse that curse. You don't curse the person. You curse the curse that they have cursed you, not the person. Now this is where many believers get it wrong. They think by cursing the person who cursed you, the curse that that person cursed you would have been dealt with. No. For words are eternal. Remember what Jesus said? Jesus said in John chapter 6 verse 63 to 66, Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So that means words don't die. Words don't die. The words that I speak unto you, they are what? They are spirit 
and their life. So that means words live on forever. The person would have died, but the words lingers on forever because words are spirit and they are life. So number one factor that activates curses in the lives of people and most of the time Christians is stealing. Every time you withhold the tithes and the offering that belongs to God, you are activating curses in your life. I did not say it. God said it. Now notice what God said. Look at how God puts it. God said not only one person is cursed. God said in Malachi 3.9, he said, you are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. So it becomes a national curse. That's why in some countries and some continents, you see things don't progress. Because sometimes there is a curse upon a whole nation. Sometimes it's a curse upon a whole family. Sometimes it's a curse upon husbands and wives. Sometimes maybe the husband is tithing and the wife doesn't tithe or vice versa or the wife is tithing and the husband is not tithing guess what for one person not tithing they bring a curse upon the whole hmm. that's why even as a church we must have a hundred percent tithe paying church because the moment you don't tithe you're not tithing you're stealing from God once you get closer to someone who is not stealing from God, you become a culprit. That person becomes a culprit of your stealing. Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6, verse 18. We are going to jump a few scriptures because there are so many things we need to cover. Joshua, Joshua chapter 6, verse 18. The Bible says that, and you now now you know the story in Joshua chapter 1 uh, the walls of Jericho were tightly shut and then they marched around the walls of Jericho and then Jericho came down and then Jer Joshua basically gave specific instruction that there is an accursed thing in Jericho that doesn't belong to anyone it belongs to God the accursed thing is the tithe that must not be touched by anyone is the tithes and the offerings so the bible says in joshua 6 18 it says and you by all means abstain from the accursed things strong command clear instruction to follow it's a lest you become accursed when you take of the accursed things and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. Now, I want you to notice what Joshua is saying here. One person or the whole entire camp is being given specific instruction and to say that you must abstain from the accursed things. The accursed things belongs to God. The tithes and the offerings, they belong to God. Right? So Joshua said, if anyone takes any of the accursed things, then look at what happened. It says that person becomes an accursed person. It says, and when you take of the accursed things, because you have now become an accursed person, that accursed person affects the whole camp. That one person troubles the whole camp with their case. Are you following me? This is very important. I don't have the time to read all the scriptures for you. Verse 19, the Bible says that it said, But all the silver and the gold and the vessels of the bronze and iron are consecrated to the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. 
specific instruction. The tithes and the offerings belong to the Lord. It comes into the treasury of the Lord. That's why God said, bring ye all the tithes into my storehouse and prove me now if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. So the tithe is not yours. The tithe belongs to God. Some of my say, oh, but I worked hard. The Bible says, what is it that you have that you did not receive? So we jump to Joshua chapter 7, verse 1. We'll jump a few scriptures. The Bible says that, but the children of Israel committed a trespass regarding their cursed things. For Achan, the son of Kami, the son of Zabit, the son of Zara, of the tribe of Judah, took of their cursed things, so the anger of the Lord burned against the children of Israel. Look at the, the, the evil of one person affects the entire camp. The evil of one person affected the entire camp. Verse 11, Joshua chapter 7, verse 11. The Bible says that Israel has seen and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken some of the accursed things and have both stolen and deceived. They have also put it among their own staff. Oh my God, this is powerful. Let's pause there for a moment. God says, Israel have seen. Now it was not the whole of Israel that sinned. It was only Achan. Achan that stole the thing. Achan was the person who stole their cursed thing. But because of his stealing, he brought a curse upon the entire camp. So God said, Israel now has seen only one person. Do you see what happens when one person doesn't tithe or give an offering? Look at what God said. He said, Israel has seen and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken some of the accursed things and have both stolen and deceived. And they have also put it among their own stuff. That means you take what belongs to God and go and put it in your stuff. When it comes to the tithes and offering, this is where, unfortunately, many Christians think they are faster and smarter than God. You are not smarter than God. God knows what you earn. So this is where, you know, uh, uh, somebody is asking, do I tithe and give in gross or in net? Question I also want to ask. How do you want the blessing from God? Do you want the blessing in gross or you want the blessing in net? You choose. Please hear me. The tithe is not the last thing you do after you pay your mortgage or your rent or your children's school fees or you pay your car a loan or whatever. The tithe is the first thing that goes out. The tithe belongs to the Lord. God said they have taken the tithe, they have stolen and deceived and put the tithe among their stuff. Verse 12. It says, therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies. Look at what happens when you steal from God. It says, therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turn their backs before their enemies because they have become doomed to destruction. Neither will I be with you anymore unless you destroy that cursed thing from among you. So God says, get up, sanctify the people and say, sanctify yourself for tomorrow because thus says the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in your midst, O Israel. You cannot stand before your enemies until you take away the accursed things from among you. It's time to give back to God what belongs to God. I'm showing you 
how cases are activated in the lives of many Christians. As a pastor, I can attest to the fact that the most blessed people in the church are the tithers. Those who struggle in the church are the non-tithers. Those who are looking, always looking for help from the church are always the non-tithers. Always 99.9%. Always 99.9%. The tithers never come to look for help from church. Because you see, when you tithe, you commit to God. Are you following me? When you tithe, you are committed to God and God is committed to you. Verse 15 of Joshua chapter 7. The Bible says that then it shall be that the whole, that he who is taken with the accursed thing shall be burned with fire. He and all that he has because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord and because he has done a disgraceful thing in Israel. Hallelujah. So let's finally jump to Joshua 22, verse 20. Joshua 22, verse 20. Look at what Achan brought to the camp. The Bible says that did not Achan, the son of Zariah, commit a trespass in their cursed thing? And wrath fell on all the congregation of Israel. Did you see that? Because of one person's sin, the Bible says that all the congregation of Israel became a casualty and the man did not perish alone in his iniquity. Glory be to God. Number two, number two thing that activates a curse in the lives of most believers is dishonor. Number two thing that activates a curse in the life of many believers is dishonor. Hallelujah. My God, I want you to get ready because your life will never be the same again. God is about to do something unusual, something new in your life. Get ready. Tonight we are going to partake of the communion and as we partake of the communion, the blood of God, the blood of Jesus is going to take care of that 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 curse that you have been going through. And, and sometimes you can see it. It happens. You know, like I showed you, Abraham lied. Isaac followed. There are patterns in the family. There are some families, nobody goes to university. Nobody completes university. It doesn't matter how hard they work. I know there are people who work so hard and produce little. You can see a curse operating. There are some families. No woman gets married and stays married. There are some families. All the women have children without fathers. Fathers have gone a well. There are some families. All the men, they marry within five years. They divorce. There are some families. Nobody goes past the age 45 of age 40. There are some families. Nobody builds anything significant. You see? Curses. There are some families. Every firstborn dies at a certain age. Curses. There are some families. There is a type of sickness that runs through the family. From father, son, daughter, everyone. Sometimes it's in the mother's bloodline. Whatever sickness it is, it runs from the head through and through. If you don't stop it at its track, it continues to first, third, and fourth generation. But in the name of Jesus, we come against that curse in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So, number three, number two thing that activates curse in the life of Christians is dishonor. Dishonor. Genesis chapter 9, verse 20. 
to 27. Genesis chapter 9 from verse 20 to 27. The Bible says that and Noah began to be a farmer and he planted a vineyard. Then he drank of the wine and was drunk and became uncovered in his tent. Now is it a sin to to <laughs> have your own farm and and drink a little wine? It's not a sin. God said you eat the fruit of your labor. Now I'm not saying now that you go and drink some wine. Now that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is that you have the right to work hard and enjoy the fruits of your labor. You have the right. It's your blood born right. It's your responsibility. And when you are enjoying what God has given you, you enjoy it with pride. So Noah was enjoying, got drunk, and became uncovered in his tent. The Bible says that, And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers. Now, Seeing the nakedness of your father, there's nothing wrong. Maybe it's by accident. That word nakedness could also be interpreted the weakness of his father, the weaknesses of his father. There's nothing wrong. But the place that the problem arise was when he went and told his two other brothers outside. The brothers were outside minding their business. And Ham, the father of Canaan, went about heralding the noise, the news. Hey, come and see, oh, come and see. Come and see how my father is naked. Come and see how my father is naked. No. His father had the right to enjoy of his hard labor. Verse 23, the Bible says that, but Shem and Jephthah, I love their response, took a garment, laid it on their shoulders, and went backwards and covered the nakedness of their father and their faces were turned away and they did not see their father's nakedness. That's how we have to behave. This is how to honor fathers. You must, as a son, you must never, or a daughter, you must never dishonor your father and mother. Was the only promise, was the only command with a blessing. Honor your mother and your father and your days shall be long on the earth. So I love what Shem and Jephthah did. They took a garment, went backwards, and covered their father's nakedness. They didn't want the whole world to hear of it. Baham wanted everybody to hear of his father's weakness. He went on every social media platform, blasting it, telling everybody, come and see, went to the news agency, the new print news media, told them everything, their father's weakness. That's not how you do it. That is dishonor. Verse 24, the Bible says, So Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done to him. Look at that. Even in his father's sleep, he knew what his son had done. So the Bible says, verse 25, then he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants, he shall be to his brethren. Look at that. Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be, even though he has the potential to become a great leader because of what he did, because he dishonored me. He is from henceforth cursed, and from henceforth, he will only become a slave. He will only become servant of servants. Now notice, he's not going to become 
a servant of masters. He is going to become a servant of servants. That's the lowest level of curse. He will be a servant of servant. That is what it means to be cursed with a curse because of dishonor. Be careful of dishonoring a man or a woman of God. Be careful of dishonoring your mother or your father. They have the ability to change your life. Be careful of dishonor. Verse 26, the Bible says that, and he blessed, and he said, Noah said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. May God enlarge Jephthah, and may he dwell in the tents of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. My God, servant of servants. Because of what? Dishonor. Because of what? Dishonor. The last one we want to look at for today, and we close. Today we are going to really pray. After we partake of the communion, we are just going to pray in the spirit. I'm going to show you a mystery today that is going to break every form of curse that has been operating in your life, in your generation for life. Don't miss this week. This week is a week of change for you. It's a week of transformation. It's a week where you have an encounter with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Number three factor that activates curse or curses in the lives of God's people is covetousness. Covetousness. Exodus chapter 20 verse 17. God said, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. That's powerful. So God has already given specific command that you must never, you must never covet your neighbor's house. Not only that, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. Number two, you shall not covet his male servant and his female servant. Number three, nor his ox, animals, nor donkey. Number five, nor anything that your neighbor has. Don't covet. Don't covet. So let's go and look at a case studies of someone who converted his neighbor's wife when God said you shall not convert. And let's see what kind of curse that came through his family bloodline. Hallelujah. What are we looking at? Curse the curse. Every curse that has been ravaging your life will be destroyed today. I said it will be destroyed today. From today, you will be free. From today, you walk in the blessing. Anything that has hindered you and your family up until now is going to be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 2 Samuel chapter 12 from verse 1. Second Samuel chapter 12 from verse 1. The Bible says, Then the Lord sent, now obviously you know the background of this story. David has uh, gone for Uriah, Uriah's wife. Um, and when kings went to war, he was working on walls, peeping on other women's people's bathrooms. What a shameful king. And he saw Bathsheba bathing. 
And the Bible says that David sent for him, for her, and inquired whose wife it was. This is somebody's wife. See, cases how they operate. You remember Abimelech? Abimelech only wanted other people's wife. As a king, he can have any woman he wants. He is not limited to how many wives he can have, like Solomon. Solomon had a thousand. You are not limited. You shouldn't go for other people's wife. So David employed a plan to kill Uriah. Now, Uriah was his very loyal soldier. He gave a letter for him to be put at the battlefield, the, the severest part of the battle, for him to be killed so that he can take his wife. When you read the scripture, every time David was doing something where Uriah will, will be faithful, loyal. Sometimes he will not sleep. He will stay awake, guarding the king. But the king went for his wife. And when he went for his wife and killed him, look at the response that God gave. Some, second Samuel chapter 12 from verse 1. The Bible says, that, Then the Lord sent Nathan, the prophet to David and he came to him and said to him there were two men in one city one rich and the other poor the rich man was exceedingly the rich man had exceedingly many flocks and herds but the poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb which he had bought and nourished and it grew up together with him and with his children and it ate of his own food and drank from his own cup and lay his bosom lay in his bosom and it was like a daughter to him verse 4 the Bible says that, and a traveler came to the rich man who refused to take from his own flock and from his own head to prepare one for the wayfaring man who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared it for the man who had come to him. So David's anger was greatly aroused against the man. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this shall surely die, and he shall restore fourfold for the lamb because he did this thing and because he had no pity then nathan said to david you are the man that says the lord god of israel i anoint you king over israel and i delivered you from the hand of saul verse 8 i gave you your master's house and your master's wives in your keeping and gave you the house of israel and Judah and if that hadn't been too little I would also have given you much more verse 9 why have you despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight you have killed Uriah the Hittite with a sword you have taken his wife to be your wife you have killed him with a sword of the people of Ammon now therefore the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, behold, I will raise up adversity against you from your own house and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of his son for you verse 12 for you did it secretly but i will do this thing before all israel before the son my god look at what david got himself into by killing his armor bearers taking his armor bearer's wife and killing him by taking his loyal very loyal 
soldier and killing him and taking his wife, God said, this is what I'm going to do. Because of what you have done, David, I am going to, you did it secretly, but I'll do it this before Israel and before the sun. Now let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 20 from verse, 2 Samuel chapter 16, sorry, from verse 20. And let's see how the curse that he, he introduced, the curse that he activated, how it worked in his own life. You know the story, David's son went after his own sister. There was war in David's house. They were killing each other, fighting against each other, and so on and so forth. But from verse 20 of first, Second Samuel, is very key. The Bible says that then Absalom said to Ahithophel, give advice as to what we should do. And Ahithophel said to Absalom, Go into your father's concubines, whom he has left to keep the house, and all Israel will hear that you have abhorred by your father. Then the hands of all who are with you will be strong. Verse 22, So they pitch a tent for Absalom on the top of the house. Look at what happened. And Absalom went into his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. Now the advice of Ahithophel, which he gave in those days, was in was as if what had inquired at the oracle of God. So was all the advice of Ahithophel, both with David and with Absalom. My God. Look at verse 22 again. The Bible says that so Absalom pitched a tent. So they pitched a tent for Absalom on top of the house. And Absalom went into his father's concubines in the sight of all of Israel. In the sight of all of Israel. David did it secretly, but Absalom did it how? Publicly. Just like how God said it. He went to his father's concubine openly. It was an open show sleeping with his father's concubine publicly and the whole of Israel saw it. The whole of Israel all because of covetousness. And you know the story later on Absalom died and the kingdom as a matter of fact the first child that was given birth to out of that wrong marriage died. That was a punishment. Are you following me? The first child died. So, listen, cases operate, but be careful that you don't activate them. These three things are critical. These three things activate cases in the lives of believers. Stealing, stealing from God. Stealing the tithes and offerings. Secondly, dishonor. Dishonoring your mother and father. Dishonoring your, ma your man and your woman of God. Dishonoring God's sent prophet. Activate curses in your life. And number three, covetousness. Activate curses in your life. Write this down. God never intended for man to be cursed. God's original intention was for never for man to be cursed. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26 to 28. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26 to 28. The Bible says that then God said, Let us make man in our own image according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In his image, in the image of God created he 
Him, male and female, created he them. Verse 28 is very key. The Bible says, Then God blessed them. Did you see that? God never cursed man. God blessed them. The Bible says, And God said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue the earth, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So, man was blessed by God. God never cursed man. Man was blessed by God. So, God had never intended for man to be cursed. God's original intention is for man to walk in total manifestations of his blessings. So, Jesus Christ came to reverse the original curse into blessing by paying with his own life. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. The Bible says that, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich for your sake, yet for your sakes he became what? poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. What, what is the Bible saying? The Bible is teaching us the importance of restitution. A re, the replacement, replacing our poverty with Christ's prosperity so we can be prosperous. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 to 14. It says, for Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Verse 14, key verse. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of, promise of the Spirit, through faith, the promise of the Spirit through faith. So finally, listen, curses are negative spiritual words released to destroy destinies. And we have to learn how to deal with them. So Isaiah chapter 54 from verse 15 to 17, Isaiah chapter 54 from verse 15 to 17 says, Indeed, they shall surely assemble. Indeed, they shall surely gather, but not because of me, says the Lord. Whoever assembles against you shall fall for your sake. Say amen to that. And God says, Behold, I have created the blacksmith who blows the coals in the fire, who brings forth an instrument for his work, and have created the spoiler to destroy. Verse 17, key verse. Therefore, God says, no weapon, somebody say no weapon, no weapon of the enemy formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you shall condemn. You see, when the Bible says every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, that is the release of curses. When tongues are are raised against you in judgment, that's the release of curses. So God says, every tongue which rises up against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Not us, not me. You shall condemn. So tonight, you are going to condemn every curse that has been raised against you. Every curse that you know is operating in your family, in your bloodline. Tonight, you are going to deal with that curse. The Bible says that this is the heritage of the servants of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So tonight, we are going to pray. Because our righteousness is not of us, but it's of the Lord himself. That's why Galatians 3.14 says, it says that the blessing of Abraham might come through Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. This is very important. 
The promise of the Spirit through faith is the activation of the blessing. To curse the curse, you have to release a higher power. So tonight, you're going to open your mouth and begin to pray. Now prepare your communion element. We're going to pray now. Prepare your communion element. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Begin to curse every curse. Begin to curse every curse. Begin to curse every curse. Any curse that has been operating in your life, in your family, in your husband's life, in your wife's lives, in your children's lives, tonight we must come against it. Tonight you must come against it. You must come against it. Open your mouth and pray. You must open your mouth and pray. No weapon of the enemy formed or fashioned against you shall prosper. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and curse the curse. Curse the curse. Curse the curse. Curse the curse. Curse every curse. Curse it. Destroy it. Destroy it. Destroy their works. 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 Curse the curse. Don't keep your mouth shut. Curse the curse. Curse it. Curse it. Curse it. Curse it. Every curse. Anywhere you are struggling in. Anywhere. Curse it. Release the blessing. Curse it. Curse it. Curse it. Curse it. Curse it. Curse it. We curse every curse. Every curse of poverty. Every curse of servanthood. You have become a servant of servants. The curse of struggling. We destroy the curse. We destroy every 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 curse. Destroy it. Destroy every curse. Break the 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 curse. Every curse against your health. Release it back to the sender. Every curse of shame. Send it back to the sender now. Send it back to them. 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 Send it back. Send it back. It goes back. It goes back to where it's coming from. In the name of Jesus. It's going back to where it's coming from. In the name of Jesus. We curse every curse. We curse every curse. Over our children. We curse every curse. Any wicked person in any secret place. Releasing enchantments. Releasing divinations. The Bible says that there shall be no enchantment. There shall be no divinations against Jacob. We are the children of the Most High God. Cancel it. Cancel the curse. Cancel the curse. Cancel the curse. Cancel every curse. Every form of toiling is not yours. Some of you have been working for years. No house. No property. You've been a tenant for years. We curse that curse. You will not die a tenant. This year you will own your own property. In the name of Jesus. We curse the curse. We curse the curse. Every negative curse. Every curse against the works of your hands. Christ was nailed on the cross. His blood was shed so that your hands can prosper. Your hands will handle big things. Your business will flourish. Your children will flourish. Everything you touch from henceforth will prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. We are going to partake of the communion. The Bible says that he took bread. And he broke it. And said, this is my body. As often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. 
the body of Christ is blessed. Partake of it in Jesus' name. The same manner, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them. And they all drank. The blood of Jesus. Their blood will speak better things. Begin to declare. The blood speaks better things. In the name of Jesus. Now begin to cover your family with the blood of Jesus. As we partake of the blood tonight. Every curse is neutralized. Every curse is nullified. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. We've come to the end of the service. I want to lead you to Christ. If you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and your personal Savior, say with me, Lord Jesus, I come to you just as I am. Forgive me of my sins. Write my name in your book of life. May I serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you say that prayer, you are not born again. You are a child of God. Please write to us. There's a form on our website, solutionchapel.org. We have a special gift to send to you. Write to us. We'll pray with you. We'll help you to grow in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we've come to the end of the service, uh, day one of the prophetic encounter. I want to encourage you to be in tomorrow from half seven, British summer time, from half seven to half nine, and you will be blessed. is the hope of glory. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord give you peace on every side. The Lord increase you more and more. The Lord cause you to be blessed. May every curse in your life be neutralized. We curse every curse. And from tonight we release you into the blessing. In Jesus mighty name. Go from this place with this confidence and assurance knowing that you are a solution to the nations. We love you. God bless you. Have a glorious night. We'll see you tomorrow at half seven.